Dr. Olivier Monnier from Sanofi. Um, Olivier is currently head of uh, physical and quality, uh, physical quality, sorry, and process safety laboratory in Montpellier within Sanofi Synthetics uh, organization. After having gone through a course central de Marseille, Olivier spent a doctorate in process engineering in the field of crystallization with Professor Jean-Paul Klein. From 1993 to 1996, he worked at Sanofi on the Aramon industrial site to optimize crystallizations and scale up on an industrial scale of new molecules resulting from research. In 1996, his laboratory was transferred to research level to facilitate and accelerate the development of new active ingredients. Since then, the laboratory has specialized in different areas such as the choice of sulfur, polymorphism, separation of isomers or racemates, and grinding methodologies that remain in use only when no solution is found to react to the target particle size by crystallization. His main areas of research focus on batch crystallization modeling using FBRM and calorimetric measurements, crystal habit modification methodologies, and supercritical fluid crystallization. He has over 20 publications to his credit, a number of patents, and international presentations. Olivier, thank you very much for joining us today and sharing with us your experience with the Crystal 16. I'm making you a presenter now. I think now you can share your screen. Yes, we see your screen. Is it? Okay. It's ongoing, I think. Yes. Yes, it's okay for you. Uh, thank, sure. thank you, Carmen, for uh, that kind introduction. Uh, so my discussion today will focus on the optimal positioning of Crystal 16 apparatus in the development of small molecules. Uh, I will try to show you uh, within only 16 slides how uh, this device found its place in the development of our APIs. Uh, we must remember a time when uh, the solubility measurements were carried out in a flask or in the best case in a stirred double jacketed vessel. At that time, a visual observation, or in the best case, an FBRM probe or turbidity probe was used to follow the dissolution as presented by uh, Ivan. So the development of this new tool has completely changed our ways of working. So when I was asked if I wanted to attend for this uh, birthday party, I did not hesitate uh, one second. Today's discussion will be an opportunity for me to share with you how we define physical quality uh, at Sanofi. I will show you the contribution of Crystal 16 to our ways of working. Uh, we will speak uh, and discuss various items, such as, for example, the different entities accessible for a given API or the current development constraints to realize fin finally that uh, Crystal 16 is at the earth of physical quality control by allowing us to orient our crystallization towards the only type of crystallization process that is really interesting for development and I will develop later on. We will have a look on the, the advantage and some disadvantage of this device to end with a quick conclusion. So from a given molecule, uh, we have a large field of possibility to develop our API. Uh, and all these possibilities lead to a particular physical quality of our drug substance. We can choose to develop first a base or a salt. And the list of salt is quite impressive. Uh, we can develop then, when we have chosen base or salt, it as an amorphous drug to increase the bioavailability, for example, with the risk of crystalline material coming later on uh, during the process. We can move toward a particular polymorph. In our case, in my laboratory, we always try to develop the most stable one at room temperature. Or you can integrate into the crystal lattice an additional brick, like the green one here in the, on the picture. Uh, depending on the nature of the brick, you will orient your compound toward, toward a solvate, an hydrate, or a co-crystal. But 
in all the cases, the crystallization of the drug substance must make, must make it possible uh, to get an excellent purification step. It's uh, crucial at the beginning and to generate in a reproducible manner during scale up the selected physical properties to help the isolation by the chemistry, but also the formulation process and the bioavailability of our API. And of course, all this has to be done within development constraints that change every day. <coughs> so uh, I have tried to list uh, our current development constraints and uh, among all that constraints, uh, I realized that half of them can be solved or studied thanks to the Crystal 16. For example, very short development time, few products available for laboratory study, high pressure to define a robust process with a minimum number of trials, rapid scale up of the process to produce reproducible batches, even when the chemistry is not yet well established. So Crystal 16 therefore appears essential for us to carry out our development mission under the best possible conditions. <clears throat> so physical quality control, what does that mean? That begins by the purity and the assay of our uh, final powder. We have to master that first, but also it's related to the control of the polymorphism, the crystal habit, the crystal size distribution with the most robust process as possible. The process must also ensure the chemical stability of our API and its isolation, filtration, and drying. And at least, it must ensure optimal secondary properties such as flowability, triboelectricity, and galenic processability to meet the requirement of a reproducibility of the dissolution kinetics. Adding to all these items, physical quality must assess an economical the acceptable process, duly protected by patent. You have understood that all this can only be done by selecting as quickly and precisely as possible the most efficient process. This is what the Crystal 16 allow us to do. When you look to crystallization, there is several types of process uh, to, be, to be performed. But in fact, not all the crystallization process are equivalent. And in my laboratory, we systematically orient our studies toward crystallization by cooling, which unlike other type of processes, ensure all the constraints that I have defined before. The choice of the crystallization solvent is crucial for the implementation of a purifying and productive process and for targeting a given physical quality. The accessible crystal habits and therefore the physical chemical characteristics of the final powder depend directly on the choice of the crystallization solvent. It may be useful also to follow some rules when you are selecting your crystallization solvent. For us, a good solvent allowing a crystallization by cooling is always more interesting to control the impurity profile that any other solvent. It will simplify all the scale up difficulties. A monosolvent also facilitates the possible reprocessing of the batches and the design of the process. The choice of solvents must be a compromise between the shape of the crystals accessible in that solvent and the form of the solubility curve. And at least the solubility curve must be as gradual as possible, as smooth as possible to facilitate the process control and the evolution of the supersaturation during the cooling. So 10 years ago, uh, we developed a tool to simulate the solubilities of our molecules in all ICH class two or three solvents. This tool is based on the COSMO RS functionalities and allow us to have access in silico to a graph of this type, the one mentioned here, uh, which classified without prior experimental data at a predefined temperature, the solvent according to their solubilizing pro, uh, power. As an example there, uh, on one of our API, uh, we have on the abscess the list of the tested solvent 
nearly 64 solvents, and on the ordinate, a logarithmic scale reflecting the relative solubility of our molecule in the solvent. On the left side of the graph, the solvent in which the API is the most soluble, and on the right side of the graph, that in which at least it's, uh, it is at the least soluble. And uh, often, very often with our molecules, you will find on the right side of the graph water. So to move forward to a crystallization by cooling, we must select an intermediate solvent, which will allow us to have a solvent with a low solubility at room temperature and high solubility at higher temperature and with a smooth curve. And once the potential solvents have been selected in silico, like the green one there on the graph, uh, we validate the final choice uh, within, with uh, Crystal 16. Here again, we follow a very precise method methodology. We, we prepare four suspensions for per, per solvent tested at four different concentrations to frame the solubility domain and we define a heating cooling program temperature over several cycles. We do the acquisition of the solubility on metastable zone boundaries, and we validate the experimental point uh, obtained using Vantoff graph. And we analyze for each uh, sample uh, the crystals obtained in terms of X-ray diffraction, and we do some uh, microscopic observations. So the data on gen acquired with Crystal 16 generally look like that. We get an increasing solubility temperature as a function of the concentration and a lower metastable zone boundary with decreasing the concentration. And as you can see there with the different uh, arrows, uh, there is a good reproducibility of the data acquired. So we validate each solubility uh, obtained using the Vantoff diagram, and then we compare the different solubility together uh, with different solvents. So our goal at this stage is to find the solvents that allow us to set up a cooling crystallization process. So we eliminate the solvents exhibiting solubility of the type in orange uh, to keep with a low solubility, for example, or too, too, too strong solubility at one temperature. And uh, uh, we keep only the solvents exhibiting an increasing solubility with temperature of the same type as the one uh, presented in the, green, uh, uh, in the green curve. A too steep solubility does not allow an optimal control of the future process. So the final choice of crystallization is made by means of the X-ray diffraction and by means of the visual observation of the, the accessible crystal habits. In our case, in this, for this API, we choose to uh, use uh, butyl acetate. So what are the advantages and the use we made of Crystal 16? First is quick solubility determinations with low amount of material metastable zone width determination. We check the variability of our measurements by, by multiple temperature cyclings and uh, begin to, to, to produce some polymorphism or pseudopolymorphism hunting. It gives us a quick idea of the, the accessible crystal morphology, which will help us to select the, uh, the good type of, of process and the good solvent. And we may measure also induction time as a function of supersaturation in different solvents. We use also that tool to uh, uh, perform some single crystal growth uh, for structural determination. What are the drawbacks we, we add with that uh, Crystal 16? In fact, uh, we had sometimes difficulties when we have a bad weightability of our powder in solvent. Uh, which give a bad determination of the, of the solubility due to some flocculation phenomenon. The solid then stay on the surface and did not solubilize well, leading to distorting the transmittivity measurements of the solution, even under agitation. 
and also some of our API when we have some gelification of our material could lead to bad solubility determinations. So in conclusion, I would say that Crystal 16 has uh, very easily found its place in the development of our small molecules. The various improvements made over time uh, on, on this device have extended its range of use. And uh, we use it in association with the Raman coupled crystalline device uh, that give us the possibility to orient our study uh, to understand, select, and rapidly control the crystalline form to, to, to develop, especially when you have uh, hydrates form, for example, to determine uh, the stability of your hydrates within the activity of water. So thank you for your attention and uh, for your questions. Thank you very much, Olivia. We have a few questions. I will um, only take one and we will try to address the other ones um, uh, later. Um, one of the questions is to elaborate a bit on the Van Hoff graphs. Van Hoff. On the Van Hoff. Ah, yes, yes, okay, okay. Graphs. Yes. This one there. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, uh, we, we use that to, to check uh, whether we have a, with want of a straight line or, or if there is some, uh, some breakage in slopes, uh, which kind indicates the fact that uh, you have any change of polymorphic form, for example or uh, some solvated forms coming out. So it helps you to, have to, 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 to be confident on, uh, on, your, uh, on your solubility uh, measurements. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Olivier, for joining us today, for uh, sharing with us uh, uh, your experiences with the uh, uh, Crystal 16. And I'm very happy to see so many pictures of the Crystal, uh, Crystal 16 uh, uh, in the lab. Um, now I will 